scientific study as we see it in the geological survey would be a, an appropriate thing for us to discuss jointly. Yeah, I, I think so too. You mean the change? In, in, uh... Well, you know, we were here in, in the, as Bob Wright said, the, the golden years of, of uh, experimental geochemistry. Yeah. And uh, we benefited yeah. from that and contributed to it. But uh, those are gone. And they moved off, yeah. offshore now. Yeah. And it was started er, early, or at least led early on by Earl Engerson. Mm -hmm. uh, who developed the, uh, uh, the basis for supporting the uh, atomic energy studies uh, in the 40, late 40s and early 50s. Uh, later on, uh, Bill Pecora took over in charge of our branch. The, and Bill was an enthusiastic supporter for all sorts of scientific things. And uh, he didn't participate closely in them, but he appreciated them. and he. he had a lot of leverage. Uh, uh, we owe a great deal to those people. And in fact, we've commented many times that in those days we felt they were working for us. We weren't working for them. Yeah. <laughs> we just happened to have all the fun, and they did all the work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, the uh, EGNM uh, group, Experimental Geochemistry and Mineralogy, uh, was developed really by Earl uh, and. Uh, in association with the geophysical lab. Uh, I started sulfide experiments. Yeah, the lab. right. Uh, because we didn't have the equipment and things like the shop. At that time, <laughs> yeah. we had a, a very fine instrument shop. They built an electron microprobe from scratch before one was commercially available. Uh, in fact, the uh, study that uh, Pete Toolman and I did on sphalerite was, I think, probably the first use of the electron microprobe for an extensive uh, experimental study, uh, at least in the geological area. Well, mainly they weren't available any place <laughs> except the one that uh, Isidore Adler had built here at the survey with the tremendous help from the show. Yeah, Ed Broder, who was with us, was uh, very interested in, in techniques. He had an amazing uh, imagination uh, for innovation and things. And one of the things we were concerned with was getting a fluid inclusion cell that would let us look at a large size of the material so that we would not lose the, uh, stru the uh, textural information that, that was along with the fluid inclusion itself. And so uh, Ed uh, had bought these tubes with uh, resistance heaters in them and had them sitting on, on his shelf. And Phil and I had had uh, coffee one morning decided, well, we should do something about this, so we sat down and scratched sketched out the, the design that eventually became the USGS uh, heating cooling stage. And uh, Bob Bodner was here and did a lot of the checking on that, uh, examining the, the thermal gradients and so on and, and its performance. And we, we, we worked, you know, daily with the shop people in devising the stage and went through several, <laughs> several editions. It was quite a group for me to come <laughs> into. Uh, and so forth with, you know, Brian Skinner and Dave Wands, uh, Gene Rosemoon, Paul. We benefited greatly by having Joey in here. And uh, we always used to kid him about writing his papers because we said he wrote between the lines. Yeah. <laughs> you, you had to have a lot of imagination to know just what he was trying to drive at. Greatly underappreciated in the survey. Uh, you frequently speak of having a critical mass to do uh, research yeah. on. And I think we had several critical masses. That's super all critical. Together, and <laughs> even hypocritical. Yeah. But well, we, we enjoyed each other's comments and, and uh, tearing each other's manuscripts apart. And uh, it was a, a good, uh, friendly, but uh, rigorous group. Oh, yeah. And uh, we, we felt we were right on top of things. And we certainly had the opportunities to hire the very best students and, and coming out of the universities because they wanted to come work with us and we were delighted to, to uh, have that opportunity. Now those days are gone. <laughs>